We're going to talk about applying finish to pen parts, and the finish that we're going to be dealing with is uh, actually a flexible CA glue finish. And so we're going to prep this piece and get it ready to go. Well, Dave, I bought the uh, kit here. Yeah. And uh, previously I always used just component parts, so mm -hmm. why don't you tell me a little bit about this and what we're well, going to deal with. with the kit, what you get is uh, some thin glue and then some medium, uh, the, the glue finish. And then also in there are polishes that you can use after you've applied the finish to polish it and bring it up just to a mirror finish. So that's, that's kind of what you get in the, the kit and the accelerator, of course, that, that we'll use in this process. So I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, sanding this piece and get it ready for us to apply the finish. What kind of sandpaper was this that you were using, Dave? That's micro mesh, okay. and uh, it's really a very nice uh, And that comes abrasive. in grits? Yeah, and what we had there, that was 400 that I started with, and then I'm just going to these non-woven abrasive pads to uh, to bring it on up and in the end we're at somewhere around a thousand uh, roughly. Are these color coded in some way? They are yeah the color indicates how abrasive they are and so as you know this is the part that really determines the end finish how good it's going to be the better prep you have the better it's going to finish. So now going to start to apply this stuff and I'm using this blue shop towel. Um, it's kind of interesting that, that the blue towel works better than white ones because this is acid free. And we just want to apply a thin coat directly to the bare wood. What kind of speed are you running at? Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but around a thousand, not nearly as fast as I would be for, for turning the piece. I don't want it to throw the finish off. And Is it important that that coat be thin? Yes. The coat, the first one, all the coats want to be applied thin, but the first one especially, and it is the thin finish, so uh, we want it to penetrate into the wood and really bond to the wood. Then I spray just a quick shot of accelerator so that that's now dry, and I'm ready to start the successive coats now. I notice you have safety glasses on. Is there a good reason for that? <laughs> yeah, well, other than it's good shop practice anytime, but uh, in this case, the glue is uh, very sensitive to moisture, and so there's moisture on your eye, and if any of this would fly off into your eye, it'll set instantly, and that can be kind of painful. So I've applied that. Again, a thin coat. And another thing is that you don't, sand between coats. We don't want to do that and don't try to put the adhesive on there or the, the uh, finish on there. Just put it on the towel and then a nice quick easy pass across and a little of this. Now a you, number. You started with this smaller bottle first and now you're using this bigger bottle. What's the difference between those two? This is the thin. Okay, that you and started it, with. And you just start with it. That's why it's a smaller bottle, because you're not going to use nearly as much of it as you are than this is the medium. So that thin allows yeah. it to really penetrate into the wood? Exactly. That's, that's exactly what we're after, so that it really can get in there. And you see, I'm trying not to put very much of this on in each of these coats. How many coats do you need to put on? Five or six so that you build, again, slowly building the, the uh, thickness up. And, and that is because, again, we aren't sanding between coats. But when we get to the end of this, we'll sand and, and then polish that, and we need enough thickness to allow us to do that. It looks like you're only using one drop. That's pretty much what it is, just a very small amount each time. Would you uh, recommend that people not use rags? Uh, yeah, really the paper's better. Uh, cloth, there's a number of things, but if, if it gets snagged in there, it can wrap up. This being paper, uh, you know, it'll shred and pull apart. And if this even, if the glue sets too quickly and it sticks, it'll just pull a little piece of the towel off. But with cloth, it doesn't work like that, so. Dave, I've done some of this with the pens and 
at the beginning I was having great luck and then I started running into a situation where uh, there would be some cracks that would develop that seemed to be in deep. What's that all about? Well, that's, that's a great question. Um, and we're just about done, maybe one more code after this. But what, what happens with that? You know, we put the accelerator on. You notice when I started, I didn't put any on because we wanted that to glue to, to really be able to bond into the wood. If I were to put accelerator, it would have set up right there and it wouldn't have bonded in well. So what happens here, if you put on too thick a coat once you get going, you accelerate between each coat, you'd put on a layer, and that layer would set up, and then you accelerate again, and if it's too thick, you're, you're, you're accelerating the two surfaces, and the center oh, is I not see. curing. I see. And it, it takes two or three days sometimes before those cracks or checks will show up, and it's deep into the finish. It's not like you could just sand the surface a little bit and clean it up. You'd have to take it all the way back down. So real so thin layers. Very thin layers. That's why, you know, I, I just can't, you know, overemphasize that because thin layers will do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do one more here and then we'll finish this thing. So if you wanted a really artistic look to it with lots of cracking and crazing, use thick <laughs> coats. There you go. <laughs> You could start a whole new fad. Okay, again, this is 400, and I'm just going to go over this, and what I'm after now is that I get an even scratch pattern. You see the lines that aren't, that are still kind of shiny. They aren't yes. getting that dull finish. That's what I need to sand through till I get that nice, dull look all the way across. Then I know I'm uniform. And again, I'm using 400 grit here. And now is where this micro mesh, it looks like it's clogging and you just tap it and it all falls off so that you can use this for a long time. Okay, I'll go back to these pads and now I'm just going to use the two, the, the finer ones, to polish this and, and get it to start to come up. I'm going to use the other side of this pad now, and we'll start, and we've got, again, this polish, and the polish comes in, uh, in two different consistencies as well. There's a satin, and a lot of folks like to just, just use the satin, and that's all. If it will come out of there, there we go. We got lots of it that time. Okay, and... You just need a little bit of that. Yeah, again. I've got enough there for about five pins. But that's okay, because what I'm going to do is just fold the pad over and use the other side now. So I apply that and then just polish it, and you can see the sheen come right up. Now, one thing, too, we're going to go ahead and use then the, the uh, real fine for the really polished surface, but we'll stop and look at this. You don't want to contaminate these. So I don't want to use this part of the towel again because that abrasive will be on there. Mm -hmm. So I'll just fold the towel the other way now and we'll get the the fine finish out here and give it a go. This is a lot like a buffing compound, isn't it? it that's really, yeah, that's, that's exactly what this is. It's just formulated to, to work very well with the uh, CA finishes. Well... Okay, we'll just get a little on here. I don't need too much anyway. Even that's a lot more than you need, it looks like. You don't, yeah, you really don't need too much, but you can see that kind of just settles wow. right in, and then now you can just see it just gets to be like a mirror finish. Oh, like the top of your head. Yeah, funny man, funny man. Now these plastic ones at the end, they're what, what are yeah, those about? Yeah, those are, uh, they're actually bushings because when you finish a pen, of course, it's turned down to match the bushings on your, mm -hmm. your uh, mandrels. And if you finish, 
the glue sticks to those uh, bushings sure. right. and then you your bushings are ruined and so these are made just for applying this the glue will not stick to those mm -hmm. and so now that we're finished we could just pull that piece right off Beautiful. there's the glue doesn't stick to those it comes right off and and there we are wow. uh, and that's you know. hard now and yep it's ready to go it's mm. finished totally so that's the process and does all of this come in the kit Everything but these bushings. The bushings are sold separately, uh, and they come four to a pack, so you've got enough to, to do lots and lots of pens. Eventually, they are going to get uh, worn from doing different size pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the pen kits with the, the cigar pens and things, they come up higher, and you, you get little worn rings on them. So, Do they come with a collet, too, also? The the, the oh, the no, no, the that's just part of the mandrel setup to hold the pens to turn them and all that sort of thing. It's just the bushings in a kit. That's great. Okay. Uh, one other thing, you know, this, this is just finish, but it makes a great glue as well, and we'll be looking at that in uh, another video. Okay. <laughs>